Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide How does that graded potential get translated into a nerve impulse? Well, remember the parts of the neuron back on page 9.13. A neuron has a generator region that receives and generates nerve impulses and a conductor region, the axons, and where the axon joins the generator region is an enlargement called the trigger zone. This is the axon hillock. Now, excitable tissue like neurons have another potential called a threshold potential. You might think of it as an imaginary potential which varies from one cell to another. The threshold potential is the potential at which a graded potential becomes an action potential. The action potential is another name for a nerve impulse. Let's assume, for example, in this cell the graded potential is around zero. Now, keep in mind, it's not always that in different cells. Would this graded potential cause a nerve impulse? No. And why not? Because it does not reach threshold. Likewise, this one will not cause a nerve impulse. It has not quite reached threshold. But this one will. This has reached threshold, and as long as it remains above threshold, that neuron will generate nerve impulses. So what is the nerve impulse? Well, it looks like this. When the nerve impulse happens, an action potential, suddenly the membrane permeability to sodium is greatly increased due to the opening of sodium channels. Sodium rushes into the neuron and the momentum of sodium rushing in carries the inside slightly above zero perhaps to plus 30. This is immediately followed by an opening of potassium channels, increased permeability to potassium, and increased movement of potassium out of the neuron. That quickly drops the potential back to resting, but the momentum of potassium carries it slightly below, and then it settles back to resting potential. Now, even though at the peak of the action potential, the millivoltage inside the cell is positive, we still refer to this as depolarized. What makes an action potential different from a graded potential? Well, earlier I implied that the graded potential sits in one spot, not the action potential. It moves very rapidly from one end of the axon to the other. Let's see, we could compare it to dropping a pebble in smooth water. Say you're standing by the edge of a pond and you drop a small pebble in the pond and the ripples spread out. Drop a slightly bigger pebble and the ripples will spread further. And if you drop a bigger stone, the ripples spread even further. But this area where you drop the stone, the rocks, stays right in front of you in one spot. Let's say you're standing by a gently moving stream, very smooth, but it's flowing. Now you drop the pebble in the stream, the ripples spread out, but they don't sit there in front of you. The ripples move downstream. That corresponds to the action potential. Now notice that the action potential is a region of reversed charges that moves down the axon. It might look like this. Here's the axon unstimulated. The outside is positive, the inside is negative. Likewise here. This section is the nerve impulse, the action potential. Notice that the inside has become negative, the outside positive, and this region of reverse charges moves rapidly down the axon. While we're looking at the nerve impulse, let's look at one other development. Here we have a neuron which is myelinated. Now these yellow things represent the Schwann cells surrounding the axon. The gaps in between them are the nodes of Ranvier. Now beneath the Schwann cells there are no sodium and potassium channels. They only exist at the nodes. 
So the nerve impulse is created at one node and then it jumps to the next node and to the next. And that's because inside the axon the charges are being forced ahead to stimulate the next section of the neuron. This is called saltatory conduction, jumping conduction. And it's a very rapid way of conducting a nerve impulse. That's the way mammal neurons conduct impulses rapidly. Let's look at the nerve impulse with this model. Here is a neuron, actually the axon, and this represents the minus 70 millivoltage inside the axon. The outside is positive, the inside is negative. When the axon is stimulated, indicated by the red dot, let's assume a graded potential is generated which reaches threshold. When that happens, sodium ion rushes in, making the inside positive, the outside becomes temporarily negative, and the millivoltage inside the neuron jumps to plus 30. Now, watch what happens. This nerve impulse is transmitted down the axon like this, and you see a region of reversed charges to the other end of the axon. As soon as the nerve impulse passes any one point, the charges are restored to the resting potential. Now the nerve impulse is self-propagating. There's no pump pushing it at one end. It's a little like this row of dominoes. If you knock one over, the next it hits the next one, and it falls. One then knocks the next. Nothing is pushing the row of dominoes from one end to the other. Each domino causes the next one to fall. As in the nerve impulse, each action potential causes another action potential next to it.